Let's see what happens when we find the composition of a function and its inverse. And the reason we're going to do this is we want to stress how closely related a function is to its inverse. So let's suppose that our function f of x equals 2x minus 3 and that its inverse, f inverse of x, is equal to x plus 3 over 2. So let's start by finding f of 7. So if I were to find f of 7, I would get 2 times 7 minus 3, 14 minus 3, or 11. So this gives me the point 7, 11 for my function f. If I were to take the other end and take the inverse of 11, that output that I just found, notice it goes into the input now, that's going to equal 11 plus 3 over 2, 14 over 2, which is 7. So it gives me a point 11, 7 for the inverse. And notice that the output from the inverse is the input from the original and vice versa. So, with these same functions, suppose that we want to compose them. So we're going to plug f inverse of x into f of x. So we get f of x plus 3 over 2, which is 2 times x plus 3 over 2 minus 3. Notice that the 2's divide out, which just leaves us with x plus 3 minus 3, and plus 3 minus 3 adds to 0, and we're left with an x by itself. Meaning, if I were to plug something into the inverse, and then plug that into the function, I'd get my original back. That's exactly what, what we want to see. To prove that two things are inverses of each other, we plug their general form in, and make sure we get an x out. Now notice this also works the other way. If I want to find the inverse of f of x first, then we get f inverse of 2x minus 3, which is equal to 2x minus 3 plus 3 over 2, which is 2x over 2, which is again x. No matter which way I compose it, if I see an x by itself, nothing else, just that x come out of the composition, then I know that the two functions are inverses of each other.